All right, hi guys. Welcome to another episode of Kicking It with Quran. Today we have a very, very special Ooh. person with us. I can never get time on your calendar, so but that's okay. You have we have you at the in the West Coast this week for KubeCon, right? That's right. Yeah. Um, Carl York, why don't you introduce yourselves and Great. Uh, to the audience? Yeah. So um, VP of Product Strategy. I'm also the GM of Oracle Dyn. So I sort of have two roles. What's Dyn? What's uh, Dyn? So Dyn, we were acquired uh, two years ago, uh, November 21st, 2016. Uh, we're the world's uh, leading managed DNS domain name system provider. Uh, Still or was? Uh, we, we, we were as an independent company <laughs> and we also are as a general business unit inside uh -huh. Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. And all of our development teams have uh, moved to focus on our kind of edge portfolio of products. Uh, and a bunch of my functions are focused on market development and business development and M&As and you know, a lot of our all the fun strategy. stuff. Yeah. Like, M&As are fun stuff, right? I mean, talk. Talk to us about some of the M&As that we've done publicly that we've done. Yeah, yeah, we've, uh, we've done some great ones that are part of our kind of OCI team. Uh, we've done, uh, we, we did Dyn, obviously, then we also did ZenEdge. Um, right. uh, before Dyn, actually, was Web Revello. Firewall, right? Well, yeah, Web Revello, Firewall. yeah, yep. And then, yeah, yeah, Web Firewall is ZenEdge. Uh, Firewall bot protection. Right. So really outside threats coming in. We've done uh, datascience.com. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is really cool. So that's married to a bunch of our big data technologies. Sparkline uh, Digital right. we also did. Uh, so we've done a, bun a bunch, uh, and there's a lot of unique areas that we're looking at now. So the cool thing is, across all of these items, right, I see AI, I see security, I see edge. Is that kind of the general direction we're headed in terms of like strategy and product focus? Yeah, I think any, you know, if you think about the types of workloads moving to our cloud, you know, they're very data intensive. I mean, you're, you're, you know, high performance computing, data, AI. I'm all um, about high performance, man. So it's all Even that, myself yeah. personally. Yeah, well, yeah. me too, right? You know, um, but, you know, I think it's all those things. I think the edge security, um, the internet is your network. You know, how do you, how do you manage uh, which was historically on-prem software now running in the cloud, public cloud, also private cloud. So, you know, making sure that we have all the right modern tooling capabilities right. for, for operating in the cloud, but also secure in the cloud. Is right. So, I mean, I'm super dumb. So when you say edge, does that mean the edge of this? What do you mean by edge? The edge of this table. Edge know. of this table. Like the edge of the earth. The edge of the universe. Like a really sharp oh. edge. Like what's the, what's, I mean, what's the, way, the edge? The way I think about it, so if you think about the core, think about that as the servers, the physical right. infrastructure, the um, the network, mm -hmm. you know, that that's when you think of cloud. Mm -hmm. Think of all the core kind of services right. that offer. So you can look at it either from the services. The edge services tend to be things like the DNS, uh, web monitoring. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be the web application firewalls, the distributed denial of service, DDoS protection. So it's protection on the, edge of the network right you can also talk about it at the core uh, being you know where actually the core computers are or the mm -hmm. computing actually happens and the edge being the intersection where the end user connects into your so it's things like my cell phone my car yeah anything. yeah so you know there's a lot of data coming off of these things um, you know as well as you know we are mobile I mean here I, I live in the East Coast I, I was right. woke up in my bed this morning here I am in Seattle for KubeCon um, and visiting our office is here, so we're transient, we're mobile, uh, everything's connected to the internet. Right. Uh, you can access the internet over cellular, over Wi-Fi. Uh, and you know, I think what you're starting to see is as more and more workloads move to the cloud, uh, there is a discussion happening over you know, what is publicly ex accessible over the public internet, meaning the internet's becoming a part of your corporate network. And then you know, obviously with our virtual cloud network and our fast right. connect services, right. you know, it's really becoming a, a hybrid, a hybrid mm -hmm. world, especially for Oracle. So, right. so does that mean like it enables new kind of workloads? Right? Like IoT is a big fad right it's now. It's a big thing. Right? Yeah. So things like you know, big lifts that are sending out signals, events cars that are doing lots of autonomous yeah, driving. Yeah, it's funny. I think you hear about IoT, we as consumers hear about it more in the consumer use cases, but the actual most forward-leaning use cases are the ones you're discussing. It's right. industrial IoT, it's right. manufacturing, it's, uh, you know, you, you, we just saw it, um, you know, with, uh, what was the NASA? Uh, oh, know, the, the rover? The rover, like, yeah. you know, it's like everything's Mars rover. Yeah, there's another one coming in Mars 2020, Mars rover 2020. Yeah, so yeah. like everything's interconnected to the internet. The internet's pervasive, uh, all emerging, you know, com uh, countries, as parts of the world, as well as, you know, the universe right. Is, right. is trying to get connected. So um, we're finding that everything's kind of getting connected to the internet. Right. Those things are no different than a user. They need great access. They need data right. uh, management back into a core computing environment, uh, our cloud, other clouds. Right. Uh, so it's just this important inter intersect. And to right. you need the visibility to know what 
to right. control. Do do only enterprises care about this sort of stuff, or do you think startups are making new businesses out of these edge services? I, I've never. Um, I, I don't. I don't discriminate. You know, right. I think. I think the developer and this DevOps movement is um, sort of company size agnostic. Like right. if you're not. If you're not, you know, uh, leveraging modern tooling and modern capability and open source and, you know, leveraging great technologies in the edge or for security or for HPC, right. Uh, right. then I think you're going to get left in the dust in this right. kind of modern cloud age. So I don't really like to discriminate between size of company that much. It, right. I think those that market segmentation's got blurry. Right. Dyn, for example, scaled itself on the backs of the Netflixes, the Twitters, the Airbnbs, the Pinterest. Well, some of some of Dyn's customers include like Pinterest. Exactly. And, so it's like I, I don't know when when they signed on and it was you know. Literally, Angry Birds signed on, and it was an idea, right? Uh, at a <laughs> and then suddenly you see a massive spike. Yeah, and you're like, like that, oh my god, is that an enterprise? I right. mean, you, you know, we we were a company, and, and Oracle is where you know you pay for usage, right? So the cloud is all about consumption. Right. You know, you can be a global internet phenomenon that, that right. launched a month ago and have more traffic than a major yeah, bank. I mean, web, web when I think about it, you know, we we obviously in the world of, of cloud, and and we've done this before many times. You know, I had Azure, you've also done yep. this at Dyn. Um, you know, we talk about Oracle and we think, okay, Oracle used to be in the business of selling licenses. We're now in the billing business of selling usage hours, right? Yeah. Or consumption, subscription, right? And that world has really changed for Oracle. So I guess if you were to sort of like talk about what your, what your mission is here yeah. now, right? Yeah. That's very different. Yeah, I think um, when you build a startup, you're you're trying to cut through the noise, and especially in infrastructure, global right. infrastructure, you're trying to like prove that you're you're credible, right? Like, oh, bet on us, not right. you know, big name brand. I think it's actually very similar here for Oracle because Oracle is newer to the cloud infrastructure game right. and needing to come at it with a really strong point of view. So my team is entirely laser focused on creating that. Um, that sort of market momentum and, that, and, and communicating our market strategy to the market to create this market for us in cloud. Uh, we ha obviously have a very captive customer base. We have uh, co companies who have bought our licenses for our databases and our applications right. for decades and decades to run them on premise in their data center. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it's educating them, but it's also educating the broader market that Oracle's cloud has this core differentiation and security and, and, right. and for data intensive workloads and for high performance computing. So. A lot of my team's efforts are really about kind of reintroducing and helping modernize, right. bringing the modern story to the market. So, the so if I reiterate what you told me, you're basically the guy that is talking to the CIOs, the CTOs, and CEOs of our customers and saying, "This is why you should use Oracle." Right? Yeah, absolutely. Now you should you should tell me, give us give us a bit of a pitch as to like why do you think we're going to be successful? Like obviously I'm going to be biased, and I think yeah. we're going to be successful very very effectively. Yeah. Why do you think we're going to be successful? Assuming that there's, you know, the the big giant gorilla across the road over here, yeah. uh, and another giant gorilla across the pond on that side, yeah. and then we have, you know, another set of like cool wonky kids, you know, building a building down there. So <laughs> right. why do you think we've got a shot? Uh, well, I think Oracle's synonymous with enterprise, and right. I don't think that the uh, clouds that you mentioned yeah. um, out of the gate were focused there, and certainly not on the the hard workloads to run in the cloud. I mean, if you think about the types of things you're doing in HPC, if yeah. you think about just the databases and the bespoke applications that are right. running on top of these databases, right. uh, these are very difficult to move to cloud. Uh, a lot of the monitoring and security capabilities that have been running on premise for decades have not had a cloud that can actually run in or on or anything comparable. Right. So, you know, I think when you talk to the CIO today, um, from a major enterprise or even a, a fast growth startup targeting major enterprises, they have serious concerns over reliability, performance, uh, compliance, uh, and, and these are all the things that Oracle is going is uniquely suited to do. Not only because Oracle has been servicing enterprises, but I mean, Oracle is one of the largest enterprises in the world. Do you think there's a differentiation here? Because you talked about compliance, security, things like that. Right, these these are, are these things that we can differentiate, or do you think it's just an arms race, and we'll get we we are there quicker because we focused on it now as opposed to? I think, you know, in the end, these cloud platforms that are you know um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of features and mm -hmm. dozens and dozens and dozens of products are all going to have you know similar variants of mm -hmm. capability and their platforms, and I think it's important for Oracle to focus on our strengths as it relates to our background, our heritage, but also where we can uniquely innovate because of the team that we're building. The thing I love about our cloud is that the people who are building it 
we're the rising stars at all the major uh, yeah. other cloud vendors or internet companies or global scale network companies like Dot. It's the reason why we're here in <laughs> Seattle it, and in Exactly, in but right? it's also uh, New Hampshire, by the way. Uh, New a Hampshire. Bit a little bit north, but no, but I- but Same no, thing. No, but my point basically is it's the rising stars. Like right. you, when you look at a startup growing itself, it's right. you're, 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 you're going against all odds against major right. juggernauts. When you look at the careers of the people who run our cloud, when I think of Don Johnson, our EVP, or Clay McGurk, or Rahul, right. Or Mark Levy, like these guys weren't the the, the executive suite of AWS. They were the core project. guys. Right? They were they're the core guys the building it, learning, yeah. saying, you know, I really don't like what they're doing here, or we're doing here, or we're doing here, right. and we're basically given a, a, a blank canvas to say, let's go build the cloud our way, the right. way that we believe is best for the enterprise with all the learnings we have and the kind of born in the cloud guys for right, for years. right, and that's pretty cool because I generally always tell my customers, right, uh, you know, the problem the problem statement was got a few billion dollars, uh, you've already built cloud before, you've learned, how would you do it again? Yeah. Right? That's a pretty good problem. It's a great have, problem though. Right, and so I think we have a niche, I think we're gonna be successful. Before we jump off, I do wanna talk about KubeCon. Yeah. Uh, so we're here in Seattle for KubeCon. What's what's going on? What's what's the haps? What's new? Yeah. So what's all the cool new things kids are using these days? I, it's crazy. Cubes I, I and flew Docker out from Boston and this morning and, and like everybody had a cool like startup sweatshirt or hoodie or right. bag on. Uh, you know, I think we are launching our Oracle function service. Uh, we launched our Oracle streaming service, our notification service. So, you know, we're like leveraging a bunch of open source capabilities for orchestration. That's streaming. new for Oracle, right? No, and it's, and it's again, it's if you're going to operate in a hybrid sort of multi-cloud world, you got to give customers flexibility of choice. You need right. to embrace open source. It is new for Oracle, but, you know, I've talked to a lot of long time Oracle lifers here, and they're like, hey, don't forget, we have a long heritage in MySQL and Java and Linux, true. and you know, they, they want to bring me all the way back. So we actually announced this concept called the Cloud Native Framework, and the general idea was, you know, it's our, it's our Oracle Linux Cloud Native environment. We've tooled up with the CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, all the uh, common uh, open source technologies and capabilities. And we've also leveraged all those inside OCI, right. so there's a there's a hybrid, there's an on-prem story, there's a there's a public cloud story, and then there's a hybrid story as these things come together. Right. And we think that's very competitive against all the other uh, major players in the market. So yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting time. I think the opportunity here for us right now is very unique. I don't think this type of cloud could have been built five years ago. Uh, certainly not this way. Um, right. I don't think the market was quite ready. Right. And what I'm seeing a lot in the market right now is, and especially even at KubeCon, is just a lot of validation um, at the enterprise market. It's not, when you walk across the street, it's not just the kids and the cool kids these days. Right. It's enterprises right. who are trying to hire from these modern web companies right. to scale these global infrastructures. Right. And so we're seeing the validation from the CIO, from enterprises, from startups. We're seeing the analysts. Uh, the market analysts and even the media, um, who I think started skeptical when Oracle jumped into cloud, you know, um, you're behind the other guys. It, it, but I think there is a real second mover advantage here that we're going to take advantage of and continue to drive our market story into the future. Cool. Well, that's all exciting stuff. What else, man? What's your favorite team? Well, did like, you follow sport, Celtics? Like, like Celtics, like, but I mean, I'm like. I uh, grew up playing uh, American You're football. You're in New Hampshire, I'm, Ameri size in Massachusetts. I'm American football guy, so you know, um, and not New the England rugby, Patriots? Uh, Patriots? New England Patriots. Uh, really brutal loss yesterday. Um, <laughs> actually, the Seahawks are Monday Night Football. That's where we should be right now. Um, yeah. But yeah, no. Uh, I just I'm want a Seattle basketball big sports team, fan. Oh, they should get the basketball team back. But yeah, I'm a big sports fan. I grew up in a. I'm, I'm one of five boys, so I'm the middle of five sons. So that might give you a little the audience a little bit of color of why well, the most successful right one? in the middle. Oh, you know, I think they, we're all successful in the most important <laughs> in their thing own ways. Building our families. That's the thing that matters. So. Cool. Hey, well, thank you for joining cool. us. Yeah, I really awesome. appreciate it. I'm gonna go offline get his autograph and then <laughs> uh, catch us next time. Thank you.